Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and here we are on the big day, September 13th, the debut of North America's first hydrogen-powered passenger train, the Aero Zemu. Let the fanfare begin. Try not to get crushed by the crowds. Here we are in lovely downtown Redlands, California, checking out Metrolink's Aero service that extends to the county seat of San Bernardino, nine miles away. This is the second most eastern stop on the line. The eastern terminus is a mile away at the University of Redlands. This service started a few years back and is somewhat unique in the United States because it uses diesel multiple units, specifically Stadler's Flirt. Stadler is a Swiss company that makes these beauties right here in the good old US of A. Those come to us from a plant in Salt Lake City, Utah. Aero service runs on half hour to hourly headways depending on the day and time. In this video we're checking out a new addition to the rolling stock which switches out the diesel power pack in the middle of the train for a hydrogen fuel cell power pack. Let's jump into some technicals real quick. A hydrogen fuel cell creates electricity by using a catalyst to strip electrons from hydrogen atoms and then sends those off into a circuit as electricity. The byproduct of those reactions combines with oxygen to create water as exhaust. That electricity is then sent to a battery pack on the roof, which powers the electric motors at the wheels. As such, this is a very clean technology at the point of use, but hydrogen as a fuel source does have a couple of issues. One is the expense and safety of storage since it needs to be compressed and is highly flammable. The other is the environmental friendliness of the supply chain. In this case, we're augmenting or replacing diesel electric technology, and the ultimate question is if the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Another issue at play here is comparing this technology solution to overhead catenary or third rail. Those solutions tend to be a little more capital intensive and make solutions that you can plop onto existing infrastructure seem more attractive. But in the long run, electrification is probably both inevitable and cheaper. Back to reality, the train is coming into the station. The Zemu is here! The Zemu is here! Notice how quiet it is? That's nice for offsetting all the insanely loud cars, trucks, and motorcycles in the area. If you're trying to train spot in the area, the Zemu has a distinctive livery from the three diesel electrics that run on the line. It's a watery, bubbly blue and white with Flirt H2 in big letters splashed across the power pack in the middle. Get it? Splashed? Because it only emits water? Okay, back to the ride. Let's get on board. On the outside, these trains are a tiny bit longer due to the larger power pack, but they're indistinguishable on the inside from their diesel electric cousins. Various seating arrangements are available. The seats are plenty comfortable, especially considering this thing only runs 22 minutes end to end. Since hydrogen fuel cells have no moving parts, this train is as quiet as a pure electric. The aero line is smooth and enjoyable. Acceleration on the Zemu flirt seems to be a little more calm than its diesel electric counterparts, but that's okay because those are on the robust side in my opinion. This is the smoothest and quietest train I've been on, and that includes the brand new electric Stadler Kiss sets on the Caltrain corridor in Northern California. We're slowing for a stop, let's take a look around. These trains consist of two powered cars on either end of a power pack in the middle. Seating is two plus two with eight total accessible spaces. Platforms are high and boarding is level, so it's ACA compliant and easy to use. There's a good mix of inline and opposed seating as well as several table arrangements. About half of the seats are arranged on raised platforms above the trucks. I like those ones a little bit better personally. There is a gangway through the power pack. It feels like something out of science fiction, only there are no whooshing sounds when the doors open and close. The power pack makes no noise, so it feels like walking from one part of a space station to the next. For storage, there is a thin overhead rack. You have to watch your head with those in some of the seats. Most seats have access to USB charging on the outer wall. Not the best solution if you're in an aisle seat. 
Seats also have an outside armrest, but none between seats. Signage is clear, bright, and large enough for my blind ass to read. Inside lighting is adequate and not overly done. The stop in downtown San Bernardino on the other end is at a transit center. There is also a single-A baseball stadium right next to that, so there are places to go and connections to be made, even if the area is in generally rough shape. Being that rides were free, I took the train back to Redlands, and also I didn't want to walk nine miles back to my car. When I got to Redlands, a bunch of people had gathered at the train station to celebrate my trip. Who doesn't love their old pal Lucid Stew? That'll do it for our journey on North America's first hydrogen-powered passenger rail train, the Metrolink Aerozimu. Like and subscribe for more great transit and urbanism content like this, but that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway!